Absolutely there are. There are so many of them. The problem is that very few of us really want the truth. What most people want is a, a leader, a guru, a guide who will say just what you're doing exactly as you're doing, it's perfect. And these days there's a plethora to choose from. Whatever way you live, you will find someone who will tell you that that's absolutely perfect. Very few people really want to hear, that's your ego, that's your fear, that's your ignorance. And so what we do is we, we sort of guru shop until we find one who basically pats us and says, oh yeah, all the, what you're doing, no problem, it's okay. Anyway, it's all perfect. Oh, you're beating your kids, you're cheating on your wife. No, but it's okay. It's okay, you're perfect. No problem. Just have a bath in Ganga and you'll be fine. Get out, keep doing the same thing over and over again. No problem. And I'm sure you can find someone like that. And tragically, very few people really want to do the work to go within. That work of being quiet, of really looking within at who am I and what am I here for? What's the love in my heart? What's my anchoring, my grounding? And so we're, we're so easily pulled in this direction, pulled in that direction, pulled by our senses, pulled by our ego, pulled by the thing of the moment pulled by this desire, by that desire. And because the media these days has really brought the world to our fingertips, whatever you envision, someone is out there ready to give it to you. Some for money, some for free. You just have to follow them and, you know, like them and watch them and listen to them, whatever. And so the dilemma these days is, in order to really listen to what the realized beings are saying, it requires a level of surrender and a level of humility and a level of preparedness to really do sadhana that very few people have. We're living in a world today where everything's immediate. There's almost nothing you've got to wait for. You want money? Walk up to a wall, stick a card in, push some buttons, and money comes out. You want food? Drive your car up to a window, shout into it. Five feet later, drive up to another window, and your food comes out. Want to own something? Punch a few buttons on your computer? Within 24 hours, it arrives at your doorstep. Faster in some places. And so we've created a world where everything is immediate. Instant enlightenment. I'm sure if you Google it, there'll be dozens of people promising it. No meditation required. No sadhana required. Instant awakening. And so with a, a culture that has been primed, for everything immediate. The minute we are bored, we just change the channel. We go through our social media feeds like this, the news, whatever it is. Nobody even looks at things anymore. I remember when we first started making videos. They were, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes, and then suddenly people started saying, you know, the videos shouldn't be longer than 10 minutes. Nobody, nobody watches more than 10 minutes. And then a few years later, people said, you know, they really shouldn't be more than three or four minutes. Nobody watches more than three or four minutes. Now they say, if you can't give it within less than 60 seconds, nobody's going to keep watching. 
So we've, we've created a world where we want what we want immediately. And if we don't like it, there's a million other options to choose from, whether it's channels on a TV, posts on a social media feed, stations on a radio or our iPod or what, you know, what we listen to with music. Billions of options. They now count things in like three second views, like how many people actually watched it for three seconds. Basically what that means is how many people watched it at least till they blinked. We've lost our ability to stay focused. We've lost our ability to stay put, to stay still, to stay with anything. Married, great, love it, wonderful. No longer love it, no problem, get a new one. Job, love it, great, don't love it anymore, no problem, get a new one. Whatever it is, we're in this constant now lifestyle of immediacy, and absolutely no requirement whatsoever to stick with anything that doesn't float our boat for more than three seconds. So how in the world are we gonna commit ourselves to a path that requires surrendering our ego? You know, the stories from the scriptures of gurus who sent their disciples with four cows up to the mountains and said, come back when these four become 400. Can you even imagine today what the disciple would say? They'd laugh. Forget it, I'll find another guru down the block. Instant enlightenment. So if you really want to find the masters, make yourself a disciple with surrender, with patience, with openness. Sit still. Be open. It will come to you. It is our, our highest purpose on earth in life is to wake up. The universe is batting for us. The universe wants it to happen for us. This is why we've taken birth. So it isn't, it isn't rocket science. It doesn't require a lot. That guru will come. But you just have to stop changing the channels every three seconds. You have to stop switching every moment. The second we get bored, the second something sounds like, oh, it might be a little too much work. The second someone doesn't say exactly how you are in every moment is exactly perfect. The second something is not as fast as a drive through or an ATM or Amazon. Develop that patience. Develop that surrender. Call out to the universe what you really want. And the universe will bring it to you. But you've got to be clear. Is what I'm looking for someone who will pat me on the head and say, go forth, you are perfect? Or am I looking for someone who will say, the core of who you are is perfect, divine, but unfortunately, you don't know that yet. So I am going to remove all of the parts of you that are blocking you from being able to see the divine within yourself. It's like the artist who sculpts. Some people would just look at a lump of clay and say, perfect, great. But an artist looks at a lump of clay and says, ah, that 
is a dancer, or that is a bird, or that is the thinker, or that is anyone of an innumerable number of possibilities, an infinite number of possibilities in the lump of clay. But in order to bring forth the sculpture from the clay, that which isn't the bird or the thinker or the beautiful animal head or the beautiful whatever the sculpture may be, that which isn't the art gets removed. That's why if you look on the ground of any ceramic studio, you see lots of clay. That which isn't the sculpture has been removed. If the piece of clay says, no, 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 don't cut me, don't touch me, don't remove anything, what are you left with? A lump of clay. Fine. The universe loves you anyway, no problem. But if your goal is to really unfold that divine masterpiece within you, then you have to let the guru cut away that which isn't the masterpiece that needs to emerge. And that's the surrender, that's the courage. So that's up to you. If that's your call to the universe, that divine, divine artist, the divine guru will arrive. Maybe already has arrived for you. Maybe you just need to think about those you've met, those in whose presence you've been. Or maybe you haven't met them yet. But either way, Definitely they exist, 200%. But we have to have the eyes to see them. We have to have eyes to see that light. And then through them, we will see the light within our own self.